Today we are going to discuss the last type of astrophotography you can do from the city, that would be deep sky astrophotography. As you know, uh, deep sky astrophotography from the city is quite a challenge, mainly because uh, we have a bright sky, light pollution is everywhere and the sky is very brightly lit. There are other challenges that maybe you cannot see polaris from your place and so it's very difficult to make difficult to polar align your mount. Um, you have a limited amount of sky. I was able to photograph Navi in Cassiopeia for about 30 minutes before it went uh, behind the roof of the balcony I have above. Uh, Polaris, I can see it in that direction and it's in a very narrow gap between trees. So I'm in the lucky one that I can still see Polaris. And if I go in the front garden of the building, again, I can see by this much Polaris grazing on top of the roof of the building. Now here I have a tree, uh, there I have another tree and here I have a wall. So I have a limited, maybe, I don't know, 25 to 30 degrees of gap where I can see the sky. So now I will try to go with, uh, I see there, Capella, uh, that's Auriga. So we'll try to go after Auriga with this setup. This setup is my Star Adventurer. I have, I don't want to waste too much time. Um, with the very precise framing, so I go with a 135 millimeter. That's Samyang F2, um, and I use my ASI camera. You could use uh, your DSLR camera, whatever you have. The important part is to try to suppress uh, light pollution, and that you can do with filters. You can do some. You can use some filters, uh, namely ultra high contrast filters are quite good, even with color cameras, in order to. Uh, reduce light pollution, but of course those filters are best for um, emission nebula, uh, like Orion nebula, things like that. They work less well on galaxy and well, less well on refraction of refractive nebula, reflection nebula, sorry, that could be like the Pleiades. That's because there is not a lot of uh, H-alpha uh, emission. Um, so here I have uh, um, uh, Optolong Elenance filter, which is like the is a dual band filter, so that should suppress quite a lot of um, light pollution. Also, uh, there is not really advantage to go long when you photograph from the city if you don't have a strong filter that can really cut out uh, light pollution and general brightness of the sky that because the sky is so bright that you will not extract a lot of um, details and faint details even if you go longer. The only result you have, you have an overblown uh, sky with completely white and you can do nothing. Uh, I will discuss that uh, more in detail in the article. Uh, I will link below in the video below in the description of this video. Um, for this uh, purpose, if you really want to photograph from the city, then you should go monochrome with narrow band filters. Now, narrow band filters allow you to get very, very, very small uh, amount of frequency. Um, so everything else is filtered out. So most of the uh, light pollution is gone, is not there. Moonlight as well, you can suppress it. And that though means that um, you have to collect data at least three times more because usually you use three filters with respect to uh, one shot camera that is a color camera in the visible uh, in the visible spectrum. Now, as I said, I'm using an L enhance. So these are new kind of filters. They are dual band, there are three band and there are quad band filters for uh, color cameras. And so that allows to get to combine narrow bands together kind of reducing uh, the, 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 the acquisition time for the star. So enough talking, I see the little clouds that were there are gone and so I will try to have a go to the uh, Flame Star Nebula in Origa and uh, hopefully we will get some results.
Okay, so we are back on the balcony. Uh, it's morning now and I spent uh, yesterday night to photograph the flaming star nebula in Auriga. So now what remains to do is to take some flats. Um, flats are used to remove uneven illumination uh, from your light frames and to do so I found useful to use a little light board like this one that you can buy on Amazon, it's very cheap and uh, it's used by kids to um, copy a drawing or something like so. So you see that is adjustable brightness and um, this is powered by a normal power bank like those to recharge your phone. So it's very portable, very light. Um, just be careful because it's very thin so you may easily break if you put in, the, in, in your backpack or something like so. Then uh, I have a white t-shirt stretched on top of my lens. Uh, for the um, optical system, I touched nothing, so I didn't remove the camera from yesterday night. I didn't change the focus, I didn't change the aperture, and uh, I didn't change the orientation of the camera. I didn't remove any filters and things like so. So everything is exactly as the same of yesterday. So all we need to do now is to pop this light bulb on top of the lens and start to take some flats. <laughs> 